No? Well, I do. My story started with a trip to Hong Kong when I was a baby. But today, I'm not going to bore you with that story. Instead, I have another story. A story about a fisherman. Back in the days, as my parents would say, there was a young fisherman named Loy. Loy looks like any typical South Asian fisherman. He's not that tall, his teeth were not straight, and his skin grilled by the hot tropical sun. But he always has a smile on his face. Loy belongs to one of the poorest families in the village. His family barely had enough to eat or clothes to wear. In fact, the first task his newly wedded wife had to undertake was to patch up the holes in their clothes. Sometimes, herologists would get confused between Lloyd and his brother, waving to Lloyd's brother as if it was him, because all three of them would take turns wearing the same brown bell-bottom pants. On the surface, it seems as if Lloyd had nothing to offer his wife, but his wife knew there was something about him, and it was more than just charm. Lloyd was very ambitious. He dreams of being an architect or a builder one day, and that he will be able to provide his children with the highest education and that he will support his family and his parents at the same time. But at, a time, at that time, the dream sounds delusional. Given the fact that Lloyd didn't even complete elementary school, and his father constantly had to constantly remind him, Lloyd, you're born to be a fisherman. Bad boy, Lloyd. For three generations, we have all been fishermen and farmers. Although Lloyd had great ambition or great plans for his life, he always felt guilty thinking of leaving the village. He knew that his father did not want to part from him. Once, he did leave the village with his new wedded wife, and they did very well. They were able to sow live stocks had more than enough to eat, and even able to send some money home to the village. But when his wife went to visit the village, she never returned. Instead, he received a letter from his wife. Your brothers have left the country. Father wants us home. Please, come back home. And there he left his two acres of land drawn back to the same property. But now things are getting worse. Many years had passed since the war had ended. But his country was doing ruin. Famine was common. Many people wished to leave the country, but it was too dangerous. It was considered treason. If you can think of or speak of leaving the country, you'll be in prison for 10 years. And officials will get granted authority to kill on sight. Lloyd's dream seems distance away. A letter came from his three brothers. We've arrived in America. Here, take some money. Please take care of parents and stay home. It's dangerous out. Lloyd computed, <laughs> contemplated deeply. Maybe father's right. I am destined to be a fisherman. Right now, if I stay, everything will be okay and my parents will be taken care of. I have no other way. 
no boat, no hope. A few weeks later, a man approached him and said, Lloyd, meet me at midnight and I will give you my boat. Perhaps there is hope. And at midnight, Lloyd waited and waited and waited. But there was no boat in sight and no one came. The next day, Lloyd was arrested. The man who planned to give him his boat was sentenced five years in prison. Lloyd got away lightly. He was only thrown in the torture chamber with metal spikes on top and spikes at the bottom. Lloyd had to remain in the squatting positions for hours. Then he was left in jail. When he was released, the officials warned him, next time you won't be so lucky. But worst of all, they had taken the only thing he had, his fishing license. Now Lloyd's father is afraid for Lloyd's life. And he also put Lloyd under house arrest. Lloyd then shaved his head and his kid's head. Everyone thought he was going mad. Weeks later, the official and his father stopped watching Lloyd, thinking nothing would come out for him. Then Lloyd isolated himself, walking around the shoreline and wandering around. He did this for months until a retired, fisherman, a retired soldier saw him from afar, felt sorry for him. So he persuaded the officials to grant back Lloyd's fishing license, and they agreed to for two months. During that two months, Lloyd did what they were, he was told. He docked in and out every day on time. Two nights before his fishing license expired, he was with several fishermen with a large boat. They docked in and they checked in the police station as usual. The police station, the police looked at Lloyd and said, it's almost your last day. Lloyd gently agreed. After they left the shore, Lloyd asked the captain if he can take over since it's almost his last day. The captain refused. Lloyd was getting nervous. Finally, Lloyd brought food to celebrate his last day and finally persuaded the captain to take some rest and feast away while Lloyd took hold of the boat. At 12 a.m., Lloyd duck the ship on the shoreline. Lloyd turned he stood up and he took off two machetes. Men, you have two choices. You want to come with me or leave. The seven fishermen panic. Lloyd's heart is beating. Lloyd stood there boldly, and the men looked at him, looked at his fierce eyes, but they knew. Nothing's gonna stop him. Lloyd points at the boat next to him and said, leave. The fishermen ran as quickly as they can. Lloyd knew that they had to report to the police station or to he too, they too will be involved in treason. Lloyd only had moments to act. Suddenly, a crowd of people, young and old, came out of the bushes. It's his people. Lloyd pulled them into the boat. Lloyd's been plotting this for months. He knew there would be no guard in sight. But time is ticking. Lloyd and his friend held on to the board, boat. Day and night, they were racing for their lives. Never before so many lives are at stake. 
they only have enough food and fuel for a few days. They could be caught by the soldier. They could be caught in the storm and die at sea. Three days later, they arrived in Hong Kong, all 31 people, among them including several bees. Some say Lloyd was lucky. Of course you'll make it. He's a fisherman. Others say if they knew where he was going, they would have followed him. Lloyd knew where he was going. And today, Lloyd is living his dream. He renovates houses and condos. He supported his parents all through their lives, at the same time raising five children. Four of them graduated from university, and all of them have a passion for living. Fellow friends, it doesn't matter where you started, or how many times you failed, or how many people are against you. No one can take your dream away from you. But opportunity is only there for those who are willing to prepare and willing to do what it takes. Your fate is yours to create. Everyone has a story. What is yours?